Before this video begins, I want to give a massive shout out to all of the Patrons and YouTube members, Slime, Medoix, Ari, Nomad, P Hat Heavy, Delongy Boy, Water, Mr. Ezekiel, Nate21, Zaras JK, Naps, Smith, Zulu, and the rest of the Patrons and members. Thank you for supporting my work and allowing me to do what I do. Thank you to everyone who also voted me for the Golden Gnome Awards. I am a finalist in the 2020 Best New RuneScape Creator Awards. If you want to vote for me to win the Golden Gnome, the link is in the description down below. This video is definitely by far the most requested video that I've ever had. You guys asked me, Jim, how do I do PVM? What are some tips and tricks that I can use to get better at PVM? And I didn't want to answer that question without having the knowledge behind me with a first-hand experience. So I have spent the last three months trying to get better at PVM just to make this video and finally answer that question. So this is for everyone who has been asking again and again and again. Here are the essential tips that you're going to need if you want to succeed as a PVM player. The first ability we are going to talk about is Resonance. Now, Resonance is an ability that rather than taking damage, you will actually heal yourself. However, it has a little bit of a catch. You do require a shield, so you are going to need to learn how to shield swap. The easiest way to do this is to set keybinds on your keyboard. For me personally, I use Q, W, E. So Q is the shield, W is resonance, and E is switching back to the offhand weapon that I use to switch to the shield. There is a number of different bosses in the game that require you to use resonance to actually tank a hit. Tank meaning absorb the hit. Here is just a couple examples. Veracliff, which is in Elite Dungeons 2, is the second boss who spawns these giant pillars. Now, you get a little bit of a warning on your screen saying that he will slap his tail and then the giant spear will spawn. Now, this is when you know that you want to use resonance, so you're going to prepare for this attack by switching to your shield when you see the word come up, leaving it for a second, hitting resonance, and then as the spire comes up, you will heal yourself rather than take the giant damage. All right, slowing down the footage here, you can see that he has announced the attack and you'll see me grab my shield, hit resonance, and then I heal as the spire comes up. Here's another example. So we are about to get the notification. Veracliff is going to slam his tail. As soon as I see that, I switch to my shield. I activate resonance and then boom, the spire comes up and we heal rather than taking damage. I just want to give you guys a little bit of knowledge here. I was on like 200 ping during this video. So it looks like I activate resonance later than I did. So all I'm doing there is I'm using Q, W, E, which is my hot bar action bind. You can use whatever you want. But basically, shield, resonance, back to the weapon. It takes a little bit of time to master this, but with practice, you'll get there. Angel of Death is another one of the bosses in the game where it has a very similar mechanic to the boss that I just showed you. These are called the Amalgamations, and when they spawn, you can actually res on them. If you don't res on them, well, you're going to take 4,000 damage. This one doesn't actually heal you because it's typeless damage, but what it does is it negates the damage you would have taken. During the second phase of Vindicta's fight, when she's on the dragon, she will do a ranged attack that is quite easy to practice resonance on. Now, this isn't a Vindicta guide, but basically as soon as you see Vindicta get onto the dragon, she will do a melee attack, which stabs you. And then after the melee attack is when you use resonance because you know that the ranged attack is coming and it will heal you. So once again, in slow motion, she's just got on the dragon. Here comes the melee attack. So after the melee attack right there is when I hit Q, W, E, ready to resonance this ranged attack. As you can see, it heals me rather than doing damage. Now, I use Vindicta very, very particularly because after she does the ranged attack the first time, your resonance will be on cooldown. So what ability can you use to defend yourself for the next ranged attack. Well, that's our next tip. We need to learn how to use Devotion. Now, Devotion can be unlocked in one of two ways. Either you can unlock it from killing Grador or Kriara in God Wars Dungeon 1, or you can complete the Anima Islands Distraction and Diversion. Personally, I think doing the God Wars way is the easiest way to unlock it. The reason why you want to use Devotion is because it negates all of that style's damage as long as you pray the same style. So if you're getting attacked with melee, you pray melee, use devotion, and for 10 seconds, all melee damage will be reduced to one. So what we do here with the Vindicta fight, because our resonance is on cooldown, we wait for the melee hit as we did before. Now we get the melee hit in, 
Then we activate our devotion, which you'll see the bubble go around me. So now I'm protected. I switch my prayer style to ranged and we only take one damage. Now the next attack is a melee attack. So I switch back to melee to protect against it. But you can see how that saved me getting hit for 3000 damage. Where do you use devotion? Well, pretty much every single boss in the game you can use devotion for. You can use it for Gradle, you can use it for Krill, you can use it for the mini bosses in all of the elite dungeons, you can use it for Bossy McBossy Face, you can use it for Greg, you can use it for anything that attacks with a particular combat style or that you know the attack rotation for because you can then use Prayer Flicks, which is our next tip. If you don't have a gaming mouse that has the ability to keybind certain actions, I recommend having these prayers on your keyboard ready to go with a key assigned to them. Once again, we are using Vindicta as our demonstration here because Vindicta, in my opinion, is the best boss in the game to learn fundamental PVM mechanics. It's hard, but it's not too hard to learn all of these things because it's always a set rotation. Nothing changes. So the first phase of Vindicta is always pure melee. The second phase has two different attack styles. It has melee and then we have ranged. Now, once your resonance is on cooldown and you want to use devotion, you will need to learn how to switch your prayers on the fly. This is where having them keybound comes in handy because you're not dragging your mouse around. You can just press a button. So there's the melee hit. There's the ranged hit. And now we're going to go back to melee. So melee, ranged, melee. We need to learn to switch our prayers during this rotation to stop all of that damage. And it's at this point why I said you should have a gaming mouse with all of the buttons that you need on it or key binding the prayers so that you can easily flick between them, which is what we call prayer flicking without dragging your mouse off to the side because you might accidentally misclick something. Some examples of other bosses you will need to learn how to prayer flick for is the Twin Furies bosses, Hell We in God Wars 2, Nex, Regular Nex, Angel of Death, as well as higher end content such as Beastmaster and Raids. As you can see, this is why I choose Vindicta as my training boss because it incorporates a lot of these mechanics into the one fight. The next question I get a lot is, Jim, how do I get more damage out of my PVMing? And we need to learn how to adrenaline store. Adrenaline storing is once you have a 100% adrenaline, not losing it before the fight or in between the fight. When you're looking to store your adrenaline, we have a couple of different ways of going about it. So once you've got 100% adrenaline, either from crystals or combat dummies, you can use the move Surge. This is basically the easiest way to reset the timer to keep your adrenaline at 100%. Now, if your surge is on cooldown, you can use the move Freedom, you can use the move Anticipate, and remember our very first technique here that we learned, which was Resonance. Well, Resonance also resets the timer. So if you wanted to, you can do Surge into Anticipate, into Freedom, into Resonance, and by that point, your surge should be off cooldown. There's other ways of increasing this by having the Mobile Perk. Mobile perk is a perk that you unlock through the invention skill. It's really not too hard to get as a perk for invention as well. So it's pretty easy to access as well as having the double surge codex. Now the double surge codex is quite expensive, but you can make one yourself once you get the agility levels to do the Anachronia agility course. So Jim, why do we store this adrenaline, especially here at the PVM hub? Well, it's so that we can go directly into the fight with 100% adrenaline and get off our ultimate rotation. Jim, what's an ultimate rotation? Aha, there is our next tip. A rotation is a set order of abilities to maximize your damage. As I enter the Vindicta Arena, I have my 100% adrenaline and if you look down at my ability bars, I have a certain rotation I'm using. This is where I would say an intermediate level of PVM skill is required because this is taking it from being lazy PVM, which is just letting revolution do its thing, to starting to be able to manually click things and understand what is actually happening. So we have our adrenaline at the top, our basics in the middle and our rotation down the bottom. So we start our rotation by clicking the Ring of Vigor. Then we go into the Death Swiftness then we have the Luck of Dwarves. We use our Adrenaline Potion to bring back up our Adrenaline. We have three basic abilities that we go through. 
Needle Strike into Snapshot. Then I'm going to use some more basics that are on cooldown to get my Rapid Fire. And that is how I maximize my damage. And we're already up to 58% Adrenaline, going back up to 100 for another Ultimate. Let's break down the rotation step by step. So first of all, I use a Ring of Vigor. A Ring of Vigor is something that can be bought from the Dungeoneering store. It requires 62 attack and 62 Dungeoneering to use. It will cost you 50,000 Dungeoneering tokens. Now, the reason why we want to use this is because once we use an ultimate ability, it will save 10% Adrenaline. So we are already 10% Adrenaline on our way to our good abilities. Next, we have our damage boosting ultimate. So this can be the Berserk ability. This can be Sunshine. This could be Metamorphosis. It can be Death Swiftness. Uh, if you don't have Death Swiftness and Sunshine, you obtain them from the World Wakes quest. There is no quest requirements to get to this one. It only takes about an hour to do and you really want to get it done. For Sunshine and Death Swiftness, all of your damage is boosted by 50%. For Berserk, your damage is boosted by 100%. However, with Berserk, you take 50% more damage yourself. Be careful with that one. These are the easiest way to gain extra damage. Berserk will last for 20 seconds and Death Swiftness and Sunshine will stay for 30 seconds. This can be extended by having the perk Planted Feet on a weapon. Next up, we have our Ring Switch. So we've gone to our Ring of Vigor to save our 10%. Now we want our damage back. So we're going to put on our Boosting Ring. So this can be a Berserker Ring. It can be a Luck of the Wolves. It could be a Ring of Fortune. It could be a Ring of Death. Any ring that's going to boost your damage. Then we use an Adrenaline Potion. You can use Super Adrenaline Potions if you wanted to, but they are very expensive, so I don't recommend it. Normal Adrenaline Potions work fine. And the reason why you want to sip this is because it's going to boost your Adrenaline by 25%, meaning that you can use your Threshold ability sooner because the Threshold abilities are where all of the damage is. So the Ring of Vigor gives you 10%, the Sip gives you 25%. You're already at 35% Adrenaline without even doing an attack. We then have three basic abilities which should build us up to being able to use our threshold abilities. For ranged in particular, you want to have Needle Strike as your last basic ability because the next hit is going to do 7% more damage, which is our threshold ability. And then last but not least, we have our thresholds. So we've got our 50% damage boost from Death Swiftness. We've got our 7% boost from the Needle Strike. We've got our good ring on, so we're doing more damage. And then we're going to use our threshold abilities, which are going to annihilate whatever we are trying to kill with that big damage. This is honestly an art form once you see it work all together. So we're entering the arena. We've got our 100% adrenaline. We are stalling it by using our surges, by using our freedoms. Once Vindicta drops down, we are instantly going to use Ring of Vigor, Death Swiftness, Luck of the Dwarves, Adrenaline Potion into our basic abilities. We're going to use Needle Strike into a snapshot for that 7% damage boost. And then we're going to use our Rapid Fire and that is the rotation complete. From here on out, it is all about building that Adrenaline back up to 100% for another ultimate. And remember, every attack in this Death Swiftness is boosted 50% that this is going to be the hardest tip for people to learn and my best advice is to practice that is why everything that i'm mentioning is at vindicta i want you guys to practice all of these techniques at the one boss because you will learn so many fundamentals at this one boss that you can take to other bosses I want to finish this video with a full vindicta kill so here we are getting our adrenaline from the adrenaline crystal you will then see me click the portal as soon as I go through the portal, I am using the ability Freedom to store my Adrenaline. I'm going to traverse the barrier and rejoin. As soon as I rejoin, I'm going to use Surge. This stores my Adrenaline again. We're going to traverse the barrier and then use one more Surge, which continues to hold my Adrenaline at 100%. As soon as we are in the fight, we are doing the rotation. We are using Death Swiftness. We're using our Adrenaline Potions. We are doing all of the damage going through all of our thresholds. Now, as you can see, I am protecting against melee here because the start of the Vindicta fight is only a melee fight. So we do not have to do any prayer flicking or anything tricky right now. If you wanted to, you can practice dodging the fire here because he will always do the same rotation. This is not a complete Vindicta guide. I might make one in the future to help you guys. But as you've seen, I did a 11k damage hit just there. That was huge. Now we're in phase two of the fight. So we know that we are waiting for that melee hit. After the melee hit, we are going to use Resonance to get that heal. So there is our first tip. We're using Resonance now. 
after the rotation is done, Vindicta flies away. We're going to surge underneath Vindicta. This time here, we're going to do a prayer flick using Devotion, so we only get hit for one damage. That is the second tip. Now, once again, Vindicta is going to fly away. I am currently building my Adrenaline, getting ready for another ultimate attack here. Vindicta is coming at me and I've already used Devotion. I've already used Resonance. So the only thing that I can do is take the damage and Vindicta has died. There you go, guys. That is basically all of the tips that I have given you. Prayer Flicking, Resonance, Devotion, Adrenaline Stalling, and using your rotations to maximize your damage all in one clip. This has been an extremely long video for me to make because I didn't want to make this video without knowing what I was talking about. So I've literally spent the last three months hardcore learning how to PVM so that I can give you the right advice because I don't want to just go to the wiki and copy the wiki. I want to give you advice that I have personally tried and tested. So if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe. If you haven't already voted for the Golden Gnome, this is the finalist. It's still open until the start of next month. So if you want to vote for me for the Golden Gnome, the link is in the description down below as well. Thank you to everyone who's watched this video. Thanks to everyone who made this channel possible, being a YouTube member, being a Patreon. Love you guys. Thank you so much. My name is Jim and I will freaking see you later.